Hi friends. I am Roshan Chitti. You are watching Discovery Agriculture YouTube channel. If you are not yet subscribed our channel, please subscribe now. Sapota fruit is a native of Mexico and other tropical countries of South America. Sapota commonly known as chica fruit is mainly cultivated in India for its fruit value, while in southeast Mexico, Guatemala, and other countries it is commercially grown for the production of chicl which is a gum-like substance obtained from latex and is mainly used for the preparation of chewing gum. In India, it has become a very popular fruit crop in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, and Kerala. Sapota fruit can be grown in a variety of soils but deep alluvium, sandy loam, and well-drained medium black soils with pH 6 to 8 are ideal for sapota farming. However, shallow clay soils underlaid with hard pan or high calcium contents does not support sapota farming. Sapota is a tropical fruit, which likes warm and humid climate. It grows well up to an altitude of 1000 meter however, Coastal climate is ideal for sapota farming. Temperature range of 10 to 38 degrees Celsius and annual rainfall between 1250 to 2500 millimeters is suitable for sapota cultivation where it flowers and fruits throughout the year. Temperatures exceeding 43 degrees Celsius leads to flower drop resulting in a poor crop. The land is plowed two to three times and then leveled. Undulating land is divided into terraces and leveling is done. Tall and thick growing trees viz. Mango, Jamun, Tamarind, Silver Oa, and Casuarinas are established on the windward side or on all sides of the orchard. The plants for windbreak may be planted at a distance of 1.5 to 1.8 meter in a row. Sapota is commercially propagated by vegetative methods such as air layering or goody layering, grafting and budding. Planting can be done in any season provided irrigation facilities are available. Grafts are usually planted at the beginning of the rainy season. In areas where heavy rainfall is present the crop can be planted as late as September. The land should be thoroughly plowed at 30 to 45 centimeters depth and leveled. Usually planting is done at a distance of 10 meter into 10 meter. As the growth of sapota plant is slow it takes a longer period to occupy the allocated space. Therefore, a spacing of 6 meter into 6 meter is maintained until the canopies meet. Subsequently, alternate trees are removed to reduce the plant's population. Pits of 90 cm cube are opened during the summer and exposed to the sun for a period of 2 to 3 weeks. While opening the pits, the topsoil and subsoil are to be heaped separately. Each pit is filled with topsoil first followed by subsoil mixed with well decomposed farmyard manure, FYM, 1 kg superphosphate and 500 g sulfate of potash. Lindane powder at 100 g per pit is added to control termites. At the time of planting in the hole, just sufficient to accommodate the root ball of the grafted plant should be dug in the center of the pit. The grafts are planted in the hole in such a way that the graft union remains just above the soil surface. The grafts are staked immediately after planting to protect from strong winds. The young graft is protected from heat by erecting temporary shade covered with grass or plastic sheets. The polythene strip used for securing the graft joint should be removed a month after planting so as to reduce mortality of the graft. The new sprouts emerging on the rootstock below the graft joint should also be removed immediately. Irrigation is provided at an interval of 30 days in winter and 15 days in summer. This system has been found to be beneficial in saving 40% water with 70-75% to higher income. This system is laid out with two drippers spaced 50 cm from the tree at an initial stage during the first two years and then four drippers about one meter away from the tree until it attains five years of age. Intercropping with banana, papaya, pineapple, and cocoa, French beans, peas, 
tomato, brinjal, cabbage, cauliflower, cucurbits is recommended depending upon the climate and irrigation facilities available. Weeds should be regularly removed from the basin. In young plantations pre-emergence application of bromacil 2 kg AI per hectare or diron 2 kg AI per hectare has been found effective in controlling the weed population for 10 to 12 months. Pruning is normally done during winter to give shape and reduce the overcrowding of branches. Pruning is important as the flowers and fruits are born on those branches, which receive maximum air sunlight. Most common pests in sapota farming are leafweber, hairy caterpillars, and budworm. Spraying with Fosalone 35 EC, Chloropyrifos 20 EC or Endosulfan 35 EC have been found to be effective in controlling the pests. The main diseases reported are leaf spot, base, heart, and anthracnose. Application of Dithane M45, copper oxychloride, etc. have been found to be effective. The nutrient requirement of sapota is very high, as it is an evergreen tree in a continuous state of growth and fruiting. The fertilizer requirement of sapota varies from the age of the tree and soil nutrient status. The recommended fertilizer schedule is as follows under rained conditions, the nutrient application should be done on the onset of monsoon. However, under irrigated conditions, it should be applied in two splits. The total quantity of organic manure and half the dose of chemical fertilizers should be applied at the beginning of monsoon and the remaining half in the post-monsoon period. Since most of the active roots are distributed within the depth of 30 cm, nutrients should be applied under the tree canopy and mixed thoroughly in the soil. Sapota starts bearing from the third year of planting but economic yields can be obtained from fifth year onwards. The two main seasons of flowering are October to November, and February to March and the two corresponding harvesting seasons are January, February, and May to June. Sapota takes four months from flowering to maturity of fruits. The fruits are hand-picked or harvested with special harvester which has a round ring with a net bag fixed onto a long bamboo. The crop bearing commences from the fifth year. As such intercropping like vegetables may be taken up in the first four years of the project make it viable. In high density plantation, the production increases from 4 tons per acre in the fifth year to 6 tons per acre in the 7th year. Thereafter, the yield stabilizes at 8 tons per acre from 8th to 15th year. Grading is mainly based on the size and shape of the fruits. The fruits are graded into three categories depending on their size viz. Large, medium, and small. The fruits are highly perishable and can be stored under an ordinary condition for a period of 7 to 8 days after harvesting. At a storage temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, the storage life can be increased for a period of 21 to 25 days by removing ethylene and adding 5 to 10 percent CO2 to storage atmosphere. The fruits are dipped in GA and Baviston solution at a pre-packing stage in order to extend the storage life of the fruits. Sapota being a climacteric fruit has to be ripened artificially. Unripe fruits can be ripened by applying ethephon at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius and can be stored for 5 weeks. Ripened ones can be stored at 2 to 3 degrees Celsius and 90 to 95 percent RH for a period of 6 weeks. For local markets, the grated fruits are packed in bamboo baskets containing straw as padding material. This helps in reducing the bruising and promotes even ripening of fruit. For distant markets fruits are packed in cardboard boxes. Corrugated trays are equally effective as packaging material while transporting the fruits. Use of such trays is cost effective due to its reusability. Road transport by trucks or lorries is the most popular mode of transport due to the easy approach from orchards to the market. Several intermediaries like wholesalers and commission agents are involved in the marketing of the fruit. The farmer realizes around 35% of the wholesale price in the secondary market. 
Sapota farming is very profitable even for small-scale farmers under well farming practices and Sapota farming business plan. Hope you like this video. Share this video with all friends and don't forget to subscribe Discovery Agriculture YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video.